All right, um, I just wanted to make a little comment on judging. So there are some Bible verses that say not to judge. And so when the sinner feels convicted, when somebody's saying, um, guys, we shouldn't be sinning, and they're like, well, don't judge me. Only God can judge me, right? And they can pull up some verses trying to defend that. And the typical answer you'll hear the pastor or street preacher say is that that's referring to hypocritical judgment. And um, I think it actually, although I agree with that response, it actually goes deeper, I think. These verses that say not to judge actually don't, they're not even talking about what people are saying they think it's talking about. Okay, so... If I say some, if I see a woman walk into church completely naked, I could um, privately tell her, um, "Man, that's not an that's not an appropriate way to dress for church. Women should dress modestly, and walking into church completely naked is not a modest way to dress." Um, and she could say, "Don't judge me. Who are you to judge?" Okay, so, did I judge her in the way that I'm not supposed to be judging her? No, that was a just and righteous judgment, and it wasn't hypocritical, unless if I also were naked. Um, that was just me relaying information to her, um, and giving her my opinion that that's not modest, which is self-evident. And I believe anyone would agree including that lady if she were to be honest about it. So, is that a wicked judging? Did I judge her in a way I, I wasn't supposed to be judging her? Nobody would say that. Um, what's the Bible meaning when it's saying not to judge in the verses that um, it could be taken that way? It's talking about punishment. It's saying that unless if you are an administrator of the law working for the government as a police officer or a judge or a jury if you've been appointed to a jury um, it's not your place to give a punishment out that's how I see it so if I were to take a whip and start hitting that lady or a bat or, or punch her in the face that would be me judging her actually giving out a judgment meeting out punishment that's God's place. He says, vengeance is mine. Leave room for God's punishment. Um, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. So we let him do that. Or in the case of um, the government, we would let the police take care of it. Or a court of law take care of it. Um, we're not to be vigilantes, is really what I believe that's talking about. How can you say... Um, it's wrong for me to judge in my mind. So, like, if I see that lady walk into church in my mind, can I say, that's not modest, that's not good. That could lead someone to lust. Are you telling me that's wicked of me to think that? That that's not something good? So, I should look at sin and approve of it? Is that what you mean by don't judge? Don't judge me. Don't look upon me doing something sinful and think it's sinful. You should approve of all sin. Even if God hates that sin, you should say in your mind, well, I love that sin and I approve of everyone doing it. Surely that's not what it means when it says don't judge. So then to make a judgment in your mind that something God says is sinful is sinful is not a bad type of judgment. God would never say don't do that. In fact, he rebukes people who approve of sinful behavior. That in itself is a sin. So we would be sinning if we didn't judge in our mind when we see something sinful happens. So then, should we say anything? Is it a sinful judgment to speak up when we see a sin being committed? Well, surely not. The Bible says, um, open rebuke is better than love concealed. So the Bible actually calls us to give that correction. And it even says that their blood is on our hands if we don't speak up. Then, then we're partly responsible if we don't warn people when we see them sinning. 
So you can't say it's sinful for me to speak up if I see you doing a sin or boasting in a sin and I say, hey, that's not good. You shouldn't be doing that. You're going to incur the wrath of God if you continue in that behavior. You need to repent and get right with God. How can you say that that's bad for me to mention that when the Bible says I'm to do that or else your blood is on my hands? You cannot say that. So then the Bible cannot be speaking against that form of judgment either. So I can judge something to be sinful in my mind, and that's we've now proven that's good and okay and necessary. Otherwise, if I'm not judging it to be wrong, then I'm approving of it. You either disapprove or approve. You have two options. I'm either going to approve of something I see or disapprove. Those are the only two. You either approve of and enjoy and accept sin as being something good, or you hate sin, and you disapprove of sin, and you judge sin to be sinful. If you know right from wrong, if you have God's law written on your heart, um, if you've read the Bible, you should know at least somewhat what's right from wrong. God writes the law in our hearts. He reveals to all of mankind, to some extent, through our consciences, which is God-given right from wrong. So, of course, everyone can identify things that are wrong. To claim that you don't identify anything as being wrong ever is disingenuous. You're saying that if you saw somebody kill a child right in front of you, you would say, well, I don't judge that to be right or wrong. So, in my head, I'm just approving of that. That's fine with me. No, you're lying if you say that. Nobody feels that way. Everyone would be outraged. So then, clearly, we can judge right from wrong in our heads. And clearly, we should speak up and say something. Otherwise, we are, by our silence, implying approval. It's implicit that we approve of it if we don't speak up. So then, we should judge things that are wrong to be wrong in our heads. We should speak up, because the Bible says to speak up. The manner with which we speak up can be up for debate. Maybe we can pull that person aside privately as opposed to rebuking them publicly when we might think they're too immature to handle a public rebuke. That's possible that we could have some more tact to be careful not to embarrass them or something. Um, but in many cases, I think even embarrassing them could be part of that slap on the wrist that could bring about repentance. Um, it can be okay. But you have to use discernment about that and pray about it and be wise because you could turn somebody off from the church or have them calling you legalistic or just getting furious and defensive if you do call them out publicly. But that could be fine too. At the end of the day, Paul delivered people over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh that their soul might be saved on the day of the Lord. So we also may be delivering somebody over to Satan if we drive them away from the church by publicly rebuking them. That could be the same thing as delivering them over to Satan if they say, you know what, F this church. How, how dare they tell me something I did was wrong? Well, I mean, if that's their attitude, that they cannot be told something that they're doing is wrong, maybe they are not mature enough to be meeting with the body. They're boldly, openly wanting to sin. Paul casted people like that out of the church. A great way to do that would be embarrassing them, as opposed to saying, you can't come back to church anymore or whatever. That's not even necessarily your place if you're not the head pastor and it hasn't been voted on or whatever. So just to rebuke them publicly could be a good way to cast them out of church, delivering them over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. Because most churches don't cast people out, period, for being sinful. But if the members were boldly calling out sin, which the Bible calls us to do, then that would cast out people who really are not in a, a right place with God to even be attending church anyways. They're just angering God by showing up. God talks about people showing up with all their feasts and their Sabbath days and whatever with the wrong heart posture and a sinful attitude. And he says, I grow sick of your sacrifices. I, I detest your worship ceremonies, all this stuff that you're doing while you're still living in sin. It's gross to me. So out of a zealousness for God, we should not have any problem with driving people out of church who are only attending just to be religious and they actually don't have a heart for God and they're disgusting God by even showing up into his holy gatherings while they themselves want nothing to do with God and want to live a life of sin they're not helping themselves or anyone else all they're doing is giving Christians a bad name by even showing up um, they're lukewarm he's gonna vomit them out of his mouth if they don't repent anyway so what 
is even this facade, this charade all about of them even showing up to gather for worship meetings when their heart is far from God and they love sin. If you love sin, you don't love the Lord. That's very clear. You can only serve one master, either God or this world and this flesh and Satan's kingdom. It's clear they've chosen the flesh, the world, Satan's kingdom as the one they're going to serve because they're sinning all the time and they can't even take correction humbly. So, yes, speak out, rebuke sin when you see it. It's the way I'm, I'm viewing things. And that's not wrong to do at all. And I'm even arguing that's not even judgment the Bible's talking about when it says not to judge. Um, just speaking out against sin is not judging. It's when you actually punish the person for sinning. That's meeting out judgment or justice or punishment. That's what it's talking about, I believe. And I'd be interested to hear what you guys think, but um, clearly determining something to be a sin and speaking up about that is all called for in the Bible. And so if the Bible's telling you to do that, and then on the other hand, it says, don't judge, so don't do that. If you're interpreting judging to be identifying sin in your mind and saying that's sinful outwardly to warn the person, if you're saying that that's judging and the Bible tells you to do that, how can it say not to judge in one verse and then tell you to judge if you're defining that as being judgment in another verse, then the Bible's contradicting itself. And the Bible does not contradict itself. So the verses that say not to judge is talking about punishing that person. We're not called to punish them. Unless if they're a member of a church and we're corporately punishing them as a church by kicking them out of church. Even Paul says we can do that. We just don't judge the world, meaning punish the world for their sins. As a church, we don't go out and punish people for their sins. But they're saying, no, you can't even say what we're doing is sinful. That's judging. Well, I'm arguing that's not the type of judgment the verses saying not to judge are even talking about. It's talking about punishing you for it. So I think that's pretty cool that I've come to that conclusion, and I'd like to share that, and hopefully this video will convince some people that I think it's very interesting. All right, so even when I was about to render this video, um, some more ideas came to me which is this. Um, remember when the Bible says, for in the measure with which you judge, you will be judged? That's talking about punishment. The judgment of God, the wrath of God. So in the measure with which you punished others, you're going to be punished by God. Particularly if you're doing hypocritical punishment. So if you're beating people up because they're doing something wrong that you also do, then you'll be punished in that same measure. If you were ruthless, you'll be punished more ruthlessly. And a perfect parable of that was that guy who owed someone money, he was their servant, their debt was forgiven, and then they went and said, I'm going to put you in jail or beat you or kill you if you don't pay me to someone that owed them. That got back to the original person, and they... Um, got in big trouble because they had just been forgiven a big loan that they owed and then they were ruthless toward people that owed them money. So it's the same principle. It's talking about punishments for those that have wronged you. If you're getting vengeance on people, the Lord's vengeance on you is going to be all the more severe because you're taking severe vengeance out on people that owe you money or people that have wronged you in some way. That's what it's talking about when it's saying not to judge. It's saying not to get vengeance on those who have wronged you. That's meeting out of justice or judgment. That's what it's talking about when it says don't judge. It's not saying don't warn people that they're being sinful and they're going to face the judgment of God. That's literally saying, I'm warning you, I don't want you to be judged by God, so I'm letting you know you're on the road to receiving a judgment or a punishment and I'm trying to spare you from that punishment. That's the opposite of judging somebody. That's warning them of their coming judgment. And it's saying, I don't want you to be judged. But then they say, don't judge me as though I'm judging them then and there. Like I'm punishing them then and there. No. I'm warning you of a coming punishment. I'm not giving you the punishment prematurely. That's ridiculous. So you see how much confusion is there on this? So 
in the measure with which you punish, you'll be punished. That's what that's talking about. In the measure with which you judge, you'll be judged. It's not talking about determining right from wrong. And when you determine wrong is being done, refraining from that wrong yourself and warning others to also refrain from that wrong when you observe that wrong being done. How can David sit here and say, I delight in your law, Lord. It's written on my heart, I think about your laws with delight in them day and night. We're called to do that, to delight in and think about and meditate on God's laws and on his written word day and night. And then after we've done that day and night, we go out into the world and we see people doing the things God hates, but we're being told, don't judge me. So don't see the thing that I'm doing that God's word says he hates and identify that as being something he hates. So I'm to meditate on right from wrong day and night, but when I see it happen in the real world, I'm to turn a blind eye and not notice. So let's say I, I learn, do not murder, do not kill. And then I'm meditating on that with delight day and night. Wow, Lord, you say don't kill. You are a God that doesn't want us going out and unlawfully murdering people for no reason but our own pleasure or vengeance. I delight in this, Lord. I see the wisdom in it. Yes, Lord. Thank you for your law, Lord. And then I go out and see somebody murder, and I'm told don't judge that. So I'm to say, oh, uh, I don't know what I just saw. Um, I can't say whether that was right or wrong. He just murdered somebody. Uh, well, I'm not to judge them, so I can't think anything about it. Uh, I guess that's not murder. Maybe it is. Who can say? That's God's determination. So I can't determine things. I can't apply my understanding of God's laws in practice and determine right from wrong with my eyes and with my mind and with my understanding of God's word. That's retarded. Of course, I'm to identify things that are right from wrong going on around me. How could the Bible say, warn people, or their blood is on your hand, warn the wicked man, if I'm not allowed to even think of him being wicked or what he's doing being wicked, because that's judging him. And so, if I'm to think everyone's neutral, I can't make a determination because that's judging. And so, who knows if what he's doing is wicked or not? Who knows if he's wicked or not? I can't tell a tree by its fruit because telling a tree by its fruit is judging the tree, judging its fruit. I don't judge. I can't judge. So I can't tell a tree by its fruit. I can't tell if what you're doing is right or wrong. I have no idea. I'm just a non-judgmental person. I have no idea what's right or wrong for anybody but myself. That is completely retarded and that's how people are applying don't judge. Don't you see how stupid that is? Of course I have to be able to tell what's right or wrong and if the person's doing wrong, from the overflow of the wicked man's heart comes forth wicked things. From the overflow of the good man's heart comes forth good things. If I see someone doing wicked things, that's coming from the overflow of a wicked heart. Unless if they're doing something that appears potentially wicked, but it was with good intentions. There are exceptions. I'm not saying that there aren't exceptions. But for the most part, if somebody's doing wicked things, and it's clearly wicked by intent in the context, and it's unavoidable, like murdering a child out of nowhere just randomly then you can determine that person's got a wicked heart at that moment and you're judging that person by his fruit and you should tell that person hey you shouldn't be doing that i'm calling the police that's not judging them in the sense of don't judge or for in the measure with which you judge you'll be judged so according to that um i shouldn't tell someone what they're doing is wrong when they're committing a crime and call the police on them because, uh-oh, somebody might tell me what I'm doing is wrong and warn me to not do wrong, and somebody might call the police on me. Uh, I would want someone to do that if I were committing a crime. So how am I doing something that I wouldn't want others to do unto me? I'm not. I'm doing exactly what I'd expect and want others to do unto, unto me to warn me if I'm doing wrong. So... It's just really stupid the way people are interpreting judging as making a determination of right from wrong and speaking it out as being what the Bible is saying not to do when it says not to judge. That is completely unbiblical, ridiculous. Alright guys, I just, I love this topic. I've never heard anyone teach that when the Bible's talking about not to judge, it's talking about punishment. No one's ever taught on this before, and so... 
I'm going to make another observation. On 1 Corinthians 5.12, it says, What business is it of mine to judge those outside the church? Are you not to judge those inside the church? God will judge those outside the church. Expel the wicked man from among you. So the wicked man from among those gathering at church. Okay, so expelling a wicked man from among you is a punishment. Like, you aren't coming to this church meeting anymore. That's actual punishment. That's not just saying, hey, brother, uh, you really shouldn't be bragging about looking at porn all the time. Um, you should really repent of that. That's a bad sin. Um, why are you bragging about it? So, for me to say that, that's not judging him. That's warning him about a wicked behavior he's bragging about doing. Um, that type of warning I'm called to do. That's not a punishment. But it is a punishment if I take it from warning, not a punishment, and actually say, you're not coming back to church again. That's a punishment. That's like being grounded. You're not coming back to this church again until whatever, until you repent, and I need to see fruit of that change in your life. Okay, so that's actually punishing the person in the church. We are called to judge those inside the church in the sense of punishing. So judge here is punish. You can insert the word punish where you see judge. And then Paul is saying, what business is it mine to judge those outside of the church? So what business is it of mine to punish those outside of the church? Isn't God going to do that? So God will punish those outside the church, but those inside the church, the church itself can punish. That's what this, um, these two verses are saying. So, the punishment, it even describes it. Expelling the wicked man from among you. That's a punishment. Expelling them. It's an actual punishment action. So, he's defining here in the context what judge is talking about when it's saying not to judge or who to judge. You are to judge those inside the church. You're not to judge or punish those outside of the church. So people inside the church can be punished by Christians. People outside the church cannot be punished by Christians. But people outside or inside the church can both be warned of the coming wrath that's going to come for sins that we don't repent of. So warning them is what the Bible tells us to do. And if we don't do it, their blood's on our hands. So it's actually a sin not to warn them. So if somebody says, don't judge me when you tell them something they're doing is wrong, they're saying, don't warn me of the coming judgment for my sins because only God can warn me? Well, wait a minute. I'm, the Bible tells me to warn you or else your blood's on my hands. So you're telling me, warning you to keep your blood off my hands is a sin? It's a sin to obey the Bible that says to warn you or else your blood's on my hands? So, I'm damned if I do, damned if I don't, so to speak. That's not right. For you to say, don't judge me when I give you a warning out of love is actually telling me to sin by keeping my mouth shut and approving of your sin. That's awful. That's a wicked, wicked thing. That's not what the Bible is talking about when it says not to judge. It's talking about punishment.